I have come to believe that pictorial trick is a self-contained phenomenon within the limits of the medium and visual imagery is only a means to arrive at this truth. Therefore, I have no story to tell, no literary message to give, no social commentary to make in my pictures. My paintings are just paintings, disseminating my ideas and experiences as a painter. The juxtaposition of colors with its emotive functions is my primary concern and I receive my pictorial experience through color with all its technical and spatial attributes. I am obsessed by color. I speak in color. A painter must be a colorist first, whatever else he may be or may not be. These are Hari Ambadas Gade's opinions about his art. He was born on the 15th of August 1917 in Talegaon Dashasar village of district Amravati in Maharashtra and graduated in science from the University of Nagpur in 1938. He once said, when I was a child, I was fond of drawing, but I also had a compelling interest in science and mathematics. Gade joined the Nagpur School of Art and obtained a diploma in art in 1940 and thereafter a master's degree. It was around this time that Gade came in contact with artist S. H. Raza and the latter imparted to him some sound advice on painting landscapes. Gade started out by painting watercolors, but later switched to oil on canvas. He would use both the palette knife and the brush. In 1947, the Bombay Progressive Artists Group, or PAG, was founded by F. N. Souza, S. H. Raza, M. F. Hussain, K. H. Ara, H. A. Gade, and S. K. Bakre the only sculptor in the group. The group was brought together by Sousa, a strident painter, and its members practiced in a range of styles and media. Its name was inspired by the Progressive Writers Association, which had been in existence since 1936. It was basically composed of leftists and the ideologically inclined. Soon, the PAG artists discovered that the idiom of modern art had no place for ideological commitment. Gade was part of the PAG until its dissolution in 1956. From the beginning, Gade experimented in diverse styles, which might be the reason Raza insisted that he should join the PAG. The last group show of the PAG was held in 1953. By this time, a number of new members had become its associates for the purpose of exhibiting their works. These included Krishan Khanna, Akbar Padamsi, Mohan Samant and V.S. Gaitonde, among others. Theatre giant and art connoisseur, Ibrahim Al-Kazi, was among the very few who promoted the progressives in the early 50s. Souza once said it was a sad commentary on the cultural situation in our country and the level of art criticism that its most creative talents had to turn to other countries to find recognition. Padamsi, Raza and Souza were almost hounded out of the country. You know, <laughs> Gade has more or less gone into eclipse Whenever the progressive artist group is talked about, Gadi is always somehow missing, you know, in that conversation. And he was one of the premier members of the group, he and Souza. And I have often wondered why this should happen. You know? I mean, how come the Raza lived all his life, 
all his really all his creative life was uh, lived in paris and abroad i mean he traveled to america and so on wahan bhi mile the inse but gade to jisko kehte hain wo to gada hua tha in 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 bombay particularly then later on he came to delhi gade was the artist he was uh, accidentally or inadvertently or deliberately was ignored by art fraternity in mumbai that time among his contemporary he writers speakers or uh, art critics all of them they somehow would ignore him i don't know why but uh, it is time gade has he deserved to get his a uh, proper mention in the history because he was the veteran artist of a progressive group show i still maintain my see the thing the difference between me and the group we were the greatest of friends all that rose they i miss them very much you know because that tie up was friendship big heartedness large heartedness you know a capable of discussing discussing very truly what you felt about another another person's work without loss of friendship and that happened amongst all of us it happened the, the biggest thing was suza was i will i'll tell you a story about suza also i must say i, I must say something about my my, my friend gadi as well i will to show you how close gadi was to me i was in the bank i was in madras and it was a sunday and so i sleep late on a sunday in the bank particularly when i was there it was just me then around 10:30 the bell rang in my house and so on and then there was gadi so i said what are you doing here he says i'm here and we we are a member of the group <laughs> don't forget that so he was became my 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 visitor you know like that he used to stay and of course he stayed and he was very happy to stay there and we were very happy to receive him there and so on so both and there was a lot of talk you know he came out with what he thought he never broke away from the image and that requires a, 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 a Uh, some other kind of a theory behind it to be able to knock the image right out you've got to think of the punish the p- image a recognizable image is a punishes thing for a, for a, for a, 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 a complete abstract painter the pull is always that side you see uh, there are compromises which are made of course you know but and and wonderful paintings have resulted from those compromises but they f- f- few few and far between you know i mean a mondrian would never would uh, not be able to do this we never say that we say he's a mondrian is a great artist i mean a great color huh but he could never become a great artist he couldn't apply those theories actually to make a painting with which was actually to do with living as you see it this 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 part of the world he couldn't be able to see living painting was a thing by itself this this these were the two polarities that one was working in and a gade pitch pitched himself gade knew that you know that the sails are set on modernity so any had a sense of color let's let's and not only that he not only did he have a sense of color he had a sense of purpose in color he was not it wasn't frivolous it wasn't kind of color is the good things who apply color nothing is 
as cheap or as light as that. He really felt, he says, when I see, when I see a, a, a building of things happening and so on, I just see a, a, everything in color. Then he sees it in color and he puts it down. And there's no reason to think that he was telling me a lie. Because every painting that he does, it, it succeeds or fails on this account, you know. And that, he was a very honest painter also. I mean, I, 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 I regard that as a, as a great virtue, for a, a great necessity and a great virtue for any artist to be very, very true to himself and thereby to everybody else also. You know. However, painters like Jatin Das do not give much importance to the PAG movement in the Bombay of the 50s. In his opinion, in those days, the Bhulabhai Desai Memorial Institute, the BDMI, was a much more important and active place in the city. It was a place where a large number of artists practiced in a range of fields and styles. An institute with a similar structure and bohemian work style has never been set up in India again, he says. Everybody is talking of the progressive group. There was nothing like a progressive group. Bulaba Institute was an institution of its kind in the country, in Bombay. Uh, Madhav Satwalekar, Hussain, uh, Gaitonde, Dasrath Patel, eh, Alkazi, Ravi Shankar, they were all having a studio. In a dilapidated house, everybody had a room. Bal Chowda had a gallery called Gallery 59. And he had some conflict with Gaitonde. He broke the gallery and went in front of my eyes. This was Gallery 59. Soli by Bhatliwala, Madhuri Ben Desai, they were the owners. Madhuri Ben Desai, uh, father-in-law was Bhulabhai Desai, who was the first Indian ambassador to Switzerland. On his name, this was their house. And their own house was built by Bajpai, uh, uh, the first modern architect of India a lot of people don't know. In the 1950s, Mumbai was an active centre of contemporary Indian art. Once Souza and Raza had left for London and Paris, the PAG remained active in a kind of new avatar and Garde looked after the group's exhibitions up to the end. In 1954, his works were also exhibited at the prestigious Venice Biennale. The Sir J.J. School of Art, the oldest art institution in India, had been founded in Mumbai in March 1857, and eminent artists such as Hussain, Souza, Raza, Sadanand Bakre, Tayyab Mehta, Gaitonde, and Hebba were among its alumni. Jahangir Art Gallery, established in 1952, was another important art space located in South Mumbai and has been closely associated with modern art in India. In 1958, Gade took up a job with the Central Institute of Education in Delhi and also built a house in Chembur, Bombay. After his retirement, he settled there and again started painting. Manik Gade, wife of Gade's youngest son, the late Dr. Sanjeev Gade, still lives in Gade's dream home. It's a lovely place, full of greenery. Okay, 
say I remember once uh, twice Raza had visited us and um, uh, the, my father-in-law and uh, uh, artist Raza they were very good friends in their uh, early ages like uh, 1940 and 1950s so in my memory once he visited us and uh, uh, he told us that uh, he was among all the artists he was a jungli from the uh, uh, you know Madhya Pradesh and uh, he referred to my father as the most intelligent in the group so it was quite interesting to listen to uh, uh, Raza uh, something about my father-in-law growing up uh, my memories of my granddad are that um, he was always very interested in uh, our education so while he was an artist outside and he's well known for his paintings in the house as my mother mentioned he was very handy he was always uh, interested in what was going on in the house uh, as well as the repairs and the carpentry and everything that was in the house so what I remember from him is uh, a very disciplined life um, you know he had a routine in place uh, he would uh, not necessarily help us with art projects but he would encourage us to be expressive with our art so he wouldn't do it for us like I expected when I was a child but he wanted us to express ourselves he would dislike something like coloring books because they already had the uh, drawing in there and you painted between the lines he wanted us to come up with the drawing and the expression of art um, ourselves he was also very interested in our education. I remember my mother used to teach me math and uh, there were lots of hard math problems that uh, we would talk about as a family and my granddad would try and solve them and once he remembered how to solve something at 2 in the morning and he woke everybody in the house so that he could uh, explain uh, how to solve a math problem. Gade had three children. His second child and only daughter, Usha Batish, was born in February 1946 and is still alive while his two sons have passed away. Like her father, she too pursued art. In a meeting, she parted with an interesting piece of information that during the days when her father was alive, since there would be ample space in the house and PAG artists were frequent visitors, they would often store their works there. But a time came when termites ate through those works and sadly they had to be consigned to the flames. There painters here paintings here. So, it was a dream. It was a whole हमारे यहाँ जगह काफी थी ओपन एयर तो उसमें जलाया था। So his motto of life was to have simple living and high thinking, right? Uh, in those times when traveling between cities was a big challenge, he was one of the very he was very uh, widely traveled internationally person. Uh, you know, uh, he would. Uh, and one thing I found very interesting in his travel habit was that he would travel in a very small suitcase, uh, what we typically take to office, you know, that, that size of suitcase, he would travel the world with that. Essentially, consists of two items. It is totally intuitional and emotional, and then it is aesthetic. These are the two items a paint which has to be explored. Gade's relationship with the country's oldest and most reputed art gallery, the Dhumimal Gallery, goes back many decades and is quite important in India's art history. Many of his solo exhibitions were organized by the Dhumimal Gallery as Gade lived in Delhi for a number of years. Gade Saab being an academician was less vocal or less, less of a revolt as compared to some of his other contemporaries like Souza or Hussain because of which his works have got critical acclaim but have not got so much commercial acclaim or have not been recognized so widely around the world. Uh, I remember through my growing up years at 
gallery at Dhumimal. Souza and Gade were always two of the progressives that were shown the most and that the gallery shared a personal relationship with. And a lot of our important collectors, whether it be from Europe, whether it be from India, they all collected uh, Gade with equal passion or equal fondness as they collected Souza. Gadi Sap uh, was a uh, very, very simple, but a very perfect gentleman. You know, he was, he knew what he was talking, he knew what he was painting, but the, at the same time, he had no airs about him. I mean, you could just talk to him and uh, uh, understand, you know, uh, what he was trying to show in that painting and uh, the um, uh, and his interaction was always so uh, uh, full of uh, ideas that you know what what he had painted or what he was uh, and very very um, uh, simple uh, human being very um, uh, decent and very um, uh, good artist and uh, very, uh, very wonderful person at the same time. I have seen very little work of him. Umaji's collections only I have seen. And in those collections, I have seen his soft color, soft, soft. And beautiful handling of his painting, masterly painting, handled painting, was also with Umaji. Now, which I have seen even the landscapes also I have seen with Umaji, a different type of landscape, very simplified landscape. Because even if you look at the time, say in the 1940s and 1950s, 1940s because in 1950s Raza moved to Paris, um, to France, Suza and Suza was in London. But if you look at the works of Gade or even Raza, you know, the watercolours were very similar. I think the, 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 the technique the, the type of work they did, you could not distinguish Gade or Raza. But Raza got immense recognition and Gade did not. So I think everything that happened hap, you know, happens for a reason. However, I think history, for anyone talented, there's always justice. You know, at some point, they will get their recognition and they will get their due. Um, because there will be museums, there will be collectors who will see the merit in Gade's work and kind of will bring it to the forefront at some point. But if you look at the early work of both Raza and Gade, it's very often hard to distinguish one from the other. And each obviously shared a very strong relationship with each other. Both were from Nagpur. Uh, Gade was Raza's nomination to the Progressive Artist Group. Raza was strongly influenced by Langhammer who was in turn influenced by Kokoshka and then both Raza and Ara went on field painting trips together and obviously I think watching each other they tended to have a kind of a style which was very similar and then Raza breaks out of that mold in 1949 I think on a visit to Kashmir where Kartia Bresson asked him to look at the landscape in a different light and I think that's where the departure forms but if you look at the other six, the other five progressives, or even the artists around them, even though they were working in such close proximity to each other, shared space with each other, visited studios, saw each other's works, you don't see any similarity amongst them. Each is distinctively his own, which is something that's quite commendable. Uh, I, I've heard stories from my parents wherein like uh, my mother was interestingly telling me that one day she saw a painting and uh, behind Gade Saab's painting uh, there was written 100 rupees and she asked Gade Saab that uh, Gade Saab is this true that you would sell your paintings for 100 rupees and he laughed and said that 100 nahi that time even if we sold our painting for 10 rupees that was enough to feed all the progresses for one night so they've of course seen those times and they, 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 they came from very humble backgrounds and 
they all kind of were these pillars of indian art but also they had this personality which was very humble very adorable very likable similarly in 89 uh, one of the most talked of shows we had was h a gardes and they say that uh, my father in fact one day was uh, mentioning how h a gardes is a very important artist but in the delhi art scene or the contemporary art scene he was fairly unsung and surprisingly that week itself gardes saab came to the gallery and uh, there was a very big retrospective of his done in 89 which was very well received and critics like shantu datta and all said that it was a, a gift to the art world that this show was happening and uh, gadesa's work was uh, very well appreciated i think another quality about his work is that most of these important artists whether it be suza or it be we always look for uh, elements which are a little disturbing or their stronger works are more depressing or more uh, show different emotions whereas gade saab's works were very lyrical and almost happy in some way so one of the very few indian artists who is a master and whose works are well appreciated but still are mostly happy and lyrical Art critic S A Krishnan wrote in 1961 He is one of the most gifted painters of contemporary India He has an excellent intuitive sense of color and his composition has virility strength and precision He is near abstract in his approach though I do not think he will go completely non objective He has the inner urge to take the cue from nature both in regard to colors and motifs and he has the competence to transfer these elements into a finished painting in tune with his personality temperament and conception as for technique he is one of the most careful and fastidious among our young painters because of his doggedness and his belief in experimentation it is for this reason that he has been sometimes referred to as a painter's painter krishnan was right gade was one of the most well read painters among his contemporaries with a sound scientific and mathematical background when we look at the progressive art group we find that there are a number of them who had patrons in later years their works were seen their works were shown and there was the kind of interest that one needs to bring out in the market as well as among collectors all this was there during later years but in the case of gade this kind of patronage has not been seen also when his works have come to the auction houses if we look at the works that have come we find that there has been no subordination of supplement in terms of the intellectual analysis and notes that need to support an artist's work gade at best was an artist who he was deep into abstraction in terms of what he gave us when he created landscapes we can see that his landscapes belong to a certain time but it's extremely beautiful to read one of his own lines in which he says my landscapes are not pictorial my landscapes are not painterly my landscapes are about the inner truth when you think of that you think of the famous words of william shakespeare when he said to thine own self be true and it shall follow as the night the day So when we look at Gade we are looking at a landscape artist who had a very deep understanding of abstraction without having left indian shores he was not influenced by paris he was not influenced by great britain he was not influenced by western art at all but whatever he created was created in the moment and in the mood of his own time art notes say that he did a series of landscapes that belonged to kashmir landscapes that belonged to udaipur 
and landscapes that belonged to little rustic places. But when you look at the landscapes, you realize that his sense of um, form was formal. His sense of translating the landscape of huts or houses or hills and trees onto a piece of paper was perfect in the understanding of permutations and combinations. Yes, indeed, as an artist of a certain metal, an artist of certain gravitas, Gade has been overlooked. Landscape artist of unpeopled houses. Now, when I take this word or line as an artist, you know, there are many, many ways to see to it. Like, Kathena reading between the words or lines. Landscape artist of unpeopled houses. But houses are meant for people. So, how do we place these two words, unpeopled houses and landscape artist? There are houses, there are no people. I am sure you all will agree the moment we see Gade Sahib's most of the works, it is the nature, it is the landscapes, it is the geometric abstraction configurations of the planes and structures and colors. A very interesting green or a very fantastic yellow. These are two very interesting combinations in his work with a touch of red somewhere here and there and at times some drawing, linear drawings come. But the moment we again come back to the word <laughs> landscape artist of unpeopled houses, I have a very personal feeling when I see this work. I know that these houses are meant for people. But it is something like those Chinese conceptual feeling that man is insignificant in front of nature. Let that be man-built houses or the nature in itself. The presence or absence of the man itself or otherwise so insignificant that we all do not succumb but surrender in front of the nature and that is what is my feeling when I see these works where we don't see people at all, we don't see animals, we don't see men, you know, we see only the nature. It is not the vacant, it is not even haunting. It is that spiritual quality, that serenity, probably the last submission. It reminds me of a very interesting, you know, few lines of poems by Tagore. But those lines were uh, most, you know, more, more of romantic lines, but I can relate those. In Bengali, it is said, Tomari ja deshinu se tomari dan, grohon korecho jato, rini toto korecho amai. It's like, Whatever I could give you, it's actually a, a, a daan. It's, it's actually given to me rather by you. Whatever I could give you, the much you have accepted, I am indebted. So comparing and surrendering in front of nature, that feeling I get whether there are people there or not to me. I love this. Hari Ambada's Gade is not a very familiar name with the Bombay Progressive group but somehow I find his work quite unusual not because he was a student of science and then went into the arts that also is a point because there is for me very little difference between the science and the arts I think they are inextricably linked with each other what I enjoyed about Garde was that he was truly a painter's painter. He was the master of colour and the way he kind of juxtaposed the palette knife with brushwork was something interesting to view and that gave his paintings an unusual tone and texture. 
perhaps he was not really very good at maybe promoting himself or making himself more visible i really do not know why he did not get the same kind of visibility that his colleagues like suza hussein raza they got i feel that he is a little bit of a voice which has been not noticed um and i think it would be a great idea if somebody would probably do a detailed in depth almost like a post doctoral study on his work because he for me is one of the margins of the progressives and i feel that sometimes the most exciting things are done in the margins and we will get a lot of information from a lot of uh how would i say new knowledge would be unearthed if we do a relooking at gadi's work Despite of health issues in the 1990s, Gade remained active as a painter until his death on 16th December 2001.